Okay. <clears throat> this is my Lab 5, Faraday's Law, uh, Reese Mullins. So, uh, okay, yeah, let's get into it. Um, introduction. So, basically, what was going on? So, we were going to collect observational data of a magnetic or a magnet, magnet falling through a conductive tube of aluminum foil. Uh, model the magnetic uh, magnet slash tube interaction computationally and compare your computational predictions with your observed data. Uh, physics principles that were used, uh, Faraday's law, um, which is basically flux equals magnetic field at location times the area of one loop. Um, then you got to know that EMF equals change in flux times the number of loops, um, and B equals IR. Also, the biot savart law, as well as, um, I didn't put it down here, but uh, Newton's second and third laws, um, you know, when we're talking about uh, falling objects, you know, those are going to come into play. So... Um, those are the physics principles used. Completing the lab. How did we do it? Okay. Uh, one, mark north on the magnet. Using the magnometer um, on phone from lab three, uh, you'll remember this from a couple labs ago. We used the same application. Um, then set up a video of experiment to capture the entire length of the tube. I basically set up the thing, set my phone up on a, like a, um, against like one of my books or whatever, and then did that. Drop the magnet through the tube, go back through the video to find exactly where the magnet entered and exited the, the, the tube. Basically, you're going to find the times, repeat five times, and find the average um, time. And then you'll see we uh, um, we uh, do the we make a tail out of it. And then also, prior to the lab, I dropped the magnet outside of the tube to really feel the difference. I mean, obviously, there's going to be a difference. I just wanted to emphasize this because, um, like, when I was dropping it outside versus dropping it inside, definitely it could feel a big difference, obviously. Um, so these are my, this is my table. So for time one, two, three, four, five, you can see the times are here. Average time, 1.214. Um, these are some of the constants. Uh, um, tube length, 0.3. Thickness, 0 0.02. Um, with 0 0.023 mass, 23 grams, and this was our constant um, from lab three. Uh, so if we go back, you can you can see, but um, but yeah. And then so moving on to the coding. So the coding is here. So this was the um, first part. Obviously, I just separated it. Step one, step two. So these were just entering in the constants. Um, this was the dipole moment right here, um, <clears throat> or no, this was uh, to creating a function um, to calculate the magnetic field. Yeah, at the bar bank. Yeah, okay. So this was for magnetic field. And then um, <clears throat> moving down here, we've got this. This was sort of like the bulk of everything. Um, you know, you've got the current. Uh, this is just the coloring. Um, <clears throat> this was... Uh, for the uh, magnetic field of each ring. Um, this was just all sort of computational stuff that I had to put in. And then over here, you can see where it kind of finishes up. Um, yeah, so that's my code. And then this is the actual simulation. As you can see here, we've got the red on the bottom. And then this is the table. Uh, I mean, yeah, not much difference. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much that. And then interpreting the simulation. So what color represents clockwise and counterclockwise is viewed from above. Red was clockwise and blue is counterclockwise. What happened to the dynamics of the system when you flip the magnet around? Um, well, current was really the only thing that flipped. Um, everything else... Like it going, it went through pretty much the exact same, except the current was just kind of switched around. Um, so really, when you're looking at it, you know, you really wouldn't notice a difference unless you knew what you were looking for. Um, how might your computational system be more accurate? Well, I mean, the computational system isn't really accounting for any error resistance. So if you could figure out how to add that into the code, then yeah, that would make it a lot more accurate. Because um, in real life, obviously, we have error resistance. Uh, final questions. What if the resistivity were reduced to as close to zero as possible? How would the dynamics of the falling magnet change? Um, so basically, as you got closer and closer to zero, the magnet would fall 
more slowly. And what if the holes or slots were cut into the tube? How would this affect the ring current in your model? Uh, the magnet would fall faster due to the reduced number of rings. So as you're cutting holes in the thing, you're cutting it's less and less rings. Um, so <clears throat> the magnet is going to increase in velocity. So yeah, I hope you guys got a good idea. I kind of had to rush through it a little bit because uh, of time. But, um, but yeah, so I hope you guys got a good idea of what happened. And thank you.